just love it when people tell me their beliefs because I've learned from A Course in Miracles that all beliefs are false. All of them. Every one of them. Not, there's not a single belief that's true. And it's really enjoyable once you get that. So people tell me, uh, I, people will say, you want to hear what I believe in? I say, sure. And they tell me, oh, I believe in pink pyramids. And I'm just fascinated. I just look at them like, oh my gosh, it's the Christ. And I'm hearing about pink pyramids today. And that's fine. I enjoy hearing about pink pyramids. Everyone has the truth inside of them. And no matter what people profess to believe, everyone who comes to this world has a belief system and they organize their world based on their belief system. Everyone. There's no one that's come into this world, you know, as, as a pure spirit and just stayed as a pure spirit. Uh, it's like, this is a world of belief. And um, I know there's a lot of different spiritualities that use the word consciousness. And it's kind of fun when you get to the Course in Miracles, because I've heard of different things like um, raising your consciousness and let's have a higher consciousness, like in the, the 60s, you know, consciousness raising. And then we even talk about Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness or consciousness of the one. Anyway, Jesus defines consciousness as the domain of the ego. So, it's like, oh, okay. So all of consciousness is the domain of the ego. And the ego, by definition, is false. So consciousness is false, by definition. Even when we talk about unconscious versus being conscious, or becoming more fully conscious, in the end, if you become completely, fully conscious, and you don't have an unconscious anymore, that's what the Course calls forgiveness. To be fully conscious is to be in a state of complete forgiveness. And it's still false. Because in heaven there's nothing to forgive. <laughs> you get all the way, you raise your consciousness and you raise it and raise it and raise it to the very tippy top. And then the Spirit laughs with you and goes, okay, that's false too. It's the only illusion, though, that leads you out of the rest. That's why forgiveness is our goal. It's an illusion too, but it takes you to the jumping off point where you can leave the rest behind. But just remember that, next time you're having a conversation with somebody, that no matter what they profess to believe, it's all false. And once you get into a state of mind where you can see that, Oh, you can just have fun with everybody. I mean, I have so much fun, I'll be talking to somebody, they say, well, you know I'm an atheist. I say, oh, very interesting. And then we have a wonderful time. <laughs> because the, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. That's a big one. You know, a lot of times people will say, you know, I was raised in Christianity, and it was like there was a big deal between the believers and the unbelievers. Ooh. Don't want to be on that ooh, unbeliever side. Do you believe in God? No. Ooh, okay. You're one of those unbelievers. You know, no belief, even unbelief is still a belief. You can profess that you don't believe in a God. Maybe you believe in science or Maybe you believe in a, uh, a totem pole or something instead. But the, the mind that says it believes in God and the mind that says that it doesn't believe in God are actually the same mind. Because this is the domain of beliefs. And so, there's a line in one of Jesus' little pamphlets. Um, I think it's the psychotherapy pamphlet where Jesus comes out with this. This is so great to hear it from Jesus. Um, Belief in God is unnecessary, for God can be but known. Ooh. Thank you for that high pronouncement. I don't know, a lot, of your, a lot of Christians might be upset with that one. But not to mention uh, Hindus, Muslims, <laughs> throw the whole thing. 
<laughs> Maybe some of the Buddhists would resonate with that. <sighs> you can only know the Creator. You, belief in the Creator doesn't actually do you any good. You know, it's not like you get to some pearly gates and you go, I believed in you my whole life. Do I get in? It's like, well, have you accepted forgiveness and atonement? No, but I believed in you. <laughs> no, no, no there, you don't get through the gates by saying, Lord, Lord, <laughs> I believed in you for how many years and minutes and seconds, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't get any brownie points for believing in God. So, a lot of the people that I've met that I have so much these, these delightful encounters with, you know, they're, they're not sure about God, they're, or they'll say, no, I'm kind of an agnostic, I believe in knowledge, or, no, I don't, I don't really believe in God, and I don't believe in anything. Uh, that's always kind of a cute belief. I don't believe in anything. Uh, no, actually, everyone who comes to this realm does believe in something, and they set, set the whole world up based on what they believe. Just the belief, just the perception of a world is a reflection of belief. So, if you wake up in the morning, again, from our movie last night, it's, it's a false awakening. You, you seem to go from one dream at night, maybe REM sleep, to an, a what we call a daytime dream, and your, your eyes open and you look around and you see a world, that's just a reflection of belief. So, if you're still perceiving a world, you're still believing. You, you have to believe something to perceive something. In heaven, there's no beliefs and there's no perception either. There are no trees in heaven, and there's no uh, birds and rocks and countries and clouds and all these things that seem to be so common on earth. There, there are none in heaven or nirvana. So as long as you perceive, that means you believe. And as long as you believe, then purification is really what you're going for is a purified belief system, where every trace of the past is taken away, and all you're left with is a blessing. In other words, the Holy Spirit just removes all traces of the past, and just gives you a, a neutralized, a non-judgmental view of the world, which Jesus calls a happy dream. <laughs> 